Hi you guys. This is Sonia of the Good News Sunday Show and I'm your host. And this is Firm Foundation Fridays. Thank you and welcome, welcome to the set of the Good News Sunday Show. And we thank you, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to fix my clothes. Sorry, didn't know exactly what kind of shifting went on on my way to my chair. So last week for Firm Friday Foundations, we talked about eight conditions for profitable Bible study. And we are going to go over those eight conditions once again, just as a little bit of a review. One must be born again, number one. Number two, one must have a love for the Word of God and the author of that Word, which is, of course, the Bible. Number three, one must possess a willingness to work hard. Number four, one's personal will must be wholly surrendered to God. Number five, one must be obedient to the teachings of the Bible and a doer of the Word. Number six, one must approach the study of God's word in a childlike fashion. Number seven, one must believe the word of God is true and it is without error. Number eight, one must possess prayerfulness in one's life. Now, going back to this list in regards to last week, I left out number four. I was looking at my notes preparing for today and I realized I completely did not even say anything about number four, which is one's personal will must be wholly surrendered to God. Now, as you well know, we are pulling these thoughts and ideas from a book. And actually, I have a little book right here. It's called How to Study the Bible by R.A. Torrey. Okay? And I love this little book. It's concise. It's, it's 95 pages, y'all. This is a very doable read, but it is so packed full of so much rock-solid information. I can't even begin to tell you. And the other book that we are studying along with this is Women of the Word. Okay? So that's where this is a couple of the resources that we are using. We will pull from other resources as we proceed, but right now these are two of our foundational resources for this study on how to study. So, going back to number four. And number four is, is major, very, very major. A willingness to be wholly, completely surrendered to God. Now, this I'm going to read to you directly from the writing of an author and this guy was back in the 1800s I just love the old writers and you will notice that if you continue to watch the show okay so he says the fourth condition is a will wholly surrender to God if any man will do his will he shall know of the doctrine John 7 17 a, su a surrendered will gives that clearness of spiritual vision necessary to understand God's book. Many of the difficulties and obscurities of the Bible arise because the will of the student is not surrendered to the will of the author of the book. The will of the student is not surrendered to the will of God. It is remarkable how clear, simple, and beautiful passages that once puzzled us become when we are brought to that place where we say, I surrender my will unconditionally to yours. I have no will but yours. Teach me your will. A surrendered will does more than a university education to make the Bible an open book. It is simply impossible to get the most profit out of your Bible study until you surrender your will to God. You must be very definite about this. Our will must be to surrender. Our will must be surrendered to His will. Many will say, Oh, yes, my will is surrendered to God, but it is not. They have never gone alone with God and said intelligently and definitely to Him, Oh, God, I hear and now give myself to you, for you to command me, lead me, shape me, send me, and do with me 
absolutely as your will. Such an act is a wonderful key to unlock the treasure house of God's word. The Bible becomes a new book when a person surrenders to God. Doing this brought a complete transformation in my own theology, life, and ministry. And you guys, that's why I'm here. That is exactly why I, I'm here. My will has been completely surrendered to God. Over the last two years, the Lord has taken me on a journey where I no longer have a will. My will is eclipsed by His will. My heart is eclipsed by His desire for my life. And when we get to that place of being obedient in His will, then I believe we have something to share. And that is why I am here. That is why I think what I have to say is paramount to what many others may have to say. He's taken me on a journey. And I have survived. Thankful. Thankful to Him. Because of Him, I have survived with my heart still in love with Him. And this journey was hard. Very, very hard. And one day I will write a book about that, but today is not that day. So, we still have time. That is the good news. So next week we are going to start with being born again and going delving deeply into that and looking at the life of Nicodemus. And when he said, what must I do to be born again? That's where we're going to start next week, you guys. I am completely sorry for leaving out number four, but again, I'm not. That way we can pay some special time and attention to number four. Our will completely, wholly surrendered to the Lord Almighty, Jesus Christ, God, His one and only Son, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Y'all, this is Sonia signing out for the Good News Sunday Show. Have a great day and look for us again next Friday where we will do this again. We will be delving into how to study the Word of God. This is Sonia signing out for the Good News Sunday Show. Thank you.